In this video lesson, we are going to have a look at how to create an input mask on a field. This really continues the, the theme of making sure that data entry is as simple as possible and with least errors. If we have a look at the members table, it's the table we were looking at in the last lesson, you can see that there's various ways that people have entered the telephone number in the telephone field. This is not very consistent and can make life quite tricky if you are trying to do filters and sorts. So we're going to look at a way of using an input mask to make people input the data in the required format. We'll switch to design view because remember anything that's to do with the structure of the table, the way the table operates, must be done in design view. Let's make that a bit bigger. We choose the telephone field. Remember, you don't need to use the row selector for this. As long as you are clicked somewhere on that row, then the field properties at the bottom are related to that field. So you don't have to click the row selector. I'm just doing that to draw your attention to it. Looking at the field properties, you'll have used many of these. The one we're going to use today is input mask. When we click inside the input mask, we get this icon at the end with the three dots on. This is what we're going to use to start the input mask wizard. There's the input mask wizard. And you can see there's already some masks created. Phone numbers, postal codes, passwords, short times, date formats. So if you want people to enter date in that format, you would use that mask. And just to see how it works, let's try the postal code. When I click in the try it box, you can see it comes up with some dashed lines. This shows me the basic format of what I've got to enter. So I'm going to enter a postcode. Now the next part of the postcode should be um, a number. Uh, but if I try to enter a letter, the beeps put mask, it will only accept things in the correct format. When I put in the correct format, it continues. That's how the input mask works. Obviously, for this one, we want the telephone number input mask. Now, for England anyway, that format of data entry is not quite right. So if you do need to make any modifications to that, you can use the edit list button. And that brings up the basic way in which the, the mask has been created. You can modify the mask just by making changes to these numbering systems. The placeholder is what you want to appear. Remember in the postal code, we had a little underline. If we want a star to appear, we can just put a star there. I'm not going to spend any time showing you what all these different characters mean. I will just show you that if you click the help button, And then from the help, we've got two things. There's examples of input masks and there's valid input mask characters. This shows you exactly what each one of those characters means. So a nine means that the person entering the data is allowed to add, enter a digit or a space, but the entry is not required. So they can leave a blank there. Whereas a zero, a zero in there means it has to be a digit between naught and nine and entry is required so just by building up this numbering this input mask here using this variety of different characters you can build up a whole variety of different input masks i want to keep it nice and straightforward and we'll keep it on phone number as it was and then we just carry on through the wizard. And then finish. 
Let's see how that's going to work. We'll save the field and go back into data sheet view. Now when we enter a new record, go into the information, it's got to be in exactly the right format. It's got to appear using the exact format that is in the input mask. We'll look at that once more by creating a new field this time. Oops, just cancel that. Let's add a new field to the bottom of our list for postcode, which is going to be text. Just use a suitable number of field size, and then in the input mask, we'll use a wizard. Choose the postcode and just carry on through. Right, let's just make a change. Let's make those a hash sign for the placeholder rather than an underline. Makes it a bit easier to see, I think. And there we are. Save the table. Let's have a look in design view and add a new record. Come across to the postcode. There's the input mask. We've got to enter it in that format. Otherwise, it's the beeps that you, know, you can't continue. That's input masks. I suppose I should show before I finish there. Oops. I should just show before I finish there that in order to get rid of that, just simply delete it, and the input mask is no longer valid.